In part two of our in-depth series for SynthMaster 2.9, we're gonna take a look at modulation. And modulation is such an important part of synthesis and sound design, so I think it's really important to understand the modulation capabilities in SynthMaster or any synth that you may be using. Now in SynthMaster, there are hundreds of modulation targets and more than 48 modulation sources. Our modulation targets can range from the typical, like the filter cutoff here on filter one, or the index parameter on a wavetable oscillator, to coming to the effects page here, to modulating the mix on our lo-fi or EQ parameters, something here. And by right-clicking on the mix parameter here, we can see all of the different modulation sources that are available. So as I said, there's over 48, and we, we have the MIDI group here, which includes things like aftertouch, pitch bend, CC information, we can map our easy controls, X, Y pads, uh, the synth, we have constant available, key scalers, LFOs, sequencers, envelopes, and other. So a ton of flexibility and options for experimenting and adding dynamic and creative features to your sound design. Coming back to our layer one, we can actually see the modulation sources that are being used because they have an orange highlight. So our LFO, our key scaler, and then coming down below, we have pitch bin, mod, and alternate. We can immediately see have modulation assignments to various parameters within SynthMaster. We can also see modulation assignments in the modulation matrix over here to the right. By default, this is going to be on a global view to show all modulation assignments within our currently loaded preset, but we can click on a modulation source such as our LFO here, and then we can see all of the assignments that have been made for it. And right now that's been assigned to our wavetable index. And one thing to take note of is that when we select a modulation source here in this panel, the corresponding parameters that have been assigned to it will then light up with this orange border at the collar of the knob. So coming to our LFO, then we can see we switch to the index. Coming to the key scaler, then we can see our high cut has been assigned to it. So you can use this as a visual aid as well as the matrix settings here. So now that we have our key scale selected, we see the assignments for it. But if we'd like to come back to see the global assignments, we can click in this field up above and then choose none. We're not applying any filtering. And then we can see everything that's been assigned. Now we can use the mouse wheel to scroll to the next page, or we could use the left right arrows here. There's up to 13 pages with five assignments on each page that can be shown in the matrix here. So let's go ahead and initialize SynthMaster by left clicking. I'll choose initialize preset. And let's take a look at a couple of ways we can go about making modulation assignments. I'm gonna come down to our oscillator panel here and change this to a wavetable and choose a different wavetable than the default one. So if we'd like to modulate our index, what we could do, the first method for making the assignments is just simply right-clicking on the parameter. Then we can come to the add modulation and I'd like to use LFO1. We'll click here. And one thing to take note of is that in our modulation panel here right now, it's currently displaying ADSR1. But one cool feature about SynthMaster is as soon as I make this assignment to LFO1, then this field is gonna become active so that we can then make changes to the various parameters as we see fit. And if you'll notice, our collar for the index now has the orange highlight. And if we hover at the collar, we can then change the amount of the modulation that's gonna be applied to this parameter. We can also make the same adjustment here in our matrix. So as I adjust this knob, then you can see the orange collar on our index adjusts as well. Now the LFOs in SynthMaster have a ton of different parameters and options for its functionality. And starting at the top, we can choose whether we want this to be unipolar or bipolar. So if I go ahead and change the location of the start for our index, see we're sweeping on that upper portion. But if we change this to bipolar, then we'll sweep through the entire range there. But we also have unipolar plus. I'm gonna change this back to the default though and pull this back down. 
We then have a trigger mode here, so we can choose between global, mono, poly, or random. We have a gear icon here, so we could save presets if we have something that we've set up and would like to use in another preset. We can also reset our LFO back to its defaults by coming here. So in the center, we start off with a sign. But we could always click in this window and we have a ton of different options that we can use from essentially the same options that we have for our oscillator section. We can use all of these here as well. And we also start in a single mode, but we can switch this to dual. And in this way, we can create a crossfade from our sign to our triangle. And again, we can change the waveform for either of these. So coming to the triangle, let's just change this to the mini chord. So now as I increase the crossfade, notice our main waveform is going to adjust to reflect that crossfade as we blend between our initial sign and the mini chord 700. So we get a bit more of rhythmic variation when we use two different oscillator types. Now we can adjust our speed down at the bottom. Our volume, which is going to basically adjust the amount of the modulation. The phase, where we start when we initially trigger the wavetable, this the phase will determine where we start in that, which waveform we start at when we adjust the phase and how it moves through that cycle. We can add noise. We can add delay. We've got release, final, and sample and hold. So with the sample and hold, really get some cool rhythmic things going on with that. We've got our bits. And let's actually take the sample and hold up to get a better idea of the bits or take it down. We have our tone and gate. Okay, and then here we can sync to our DAW by clicking here and then choose a res resolution by clicking in this window here. And another thing I want to mention is that in our matrix, when we select the LFO here, we see our wave index assignment. We can actually click. We have two different options in how the modulation can behave. So we could choose to use multiply or add. So just know that these are available in the modulation matrix. And I'm going to take the gate back to its default by double clicking. And the second way we can make modulation assignments in SynthMaster is by click, hold, and dragging. So let us move on to the multi-stage envelope, and I'm going to assign this to the filter cutoff on filter one. So I can just click, hold, and drag that. We see we have the kind of crosshairs with arrows. I'll release that. We can then, as we saw with the index, hover on the collar and make adjustments. This will be reflected in our matrix with this knob as we've seen as well. So we can adjust that amount of modulation here. But I'd like to have the filter open up for this setting, so I'll raise it up there. So the multi-stage envelope is similar to a normal ADSR envelope, except for the fact that we can add our own points by clicking. And this, we can really come up with some rhythmic material and get really creative here with movement, depending on what we assign it to. So just clicking, we can add our points. And I'm going to pull this down a bit. Let's add another point here. So now when we trigger, we can see we have some movement on our filter there through the animation. But let's actually change our loop start to one and increase the loop end. And you'll see how that's gonna behave there. 
we can choose the amount of loops. So as long as I hold the your key or pad down, it's gonna loop and we don't actually hear that because our filter is off at the moment. So let's come over to the routing window and activate our filter. Okay, and we can actually expand this window out by clicking on the magnifying glass to make this a bit easier to work with. We can turn our sync on. So we can even change this, the loop count, to be a specific number. So if we only, only want to have it loop five times, we can set that. Then as I press and hold, we have bipolar control up at the top. So by clicking, we could toggle that on and off. We can add curves to our envelope by clicking on the white circles that are in between our points that we add, which is going to change the feel of this envelope. And let's actually turn our sync back on to get a better feel for that. So as you can imagine, let's actually uh, right click in our routing window and activate the reverb. But as you can imagine, you can get some really cool movement and again, rhythm. So let's actually come up to the top and initialize again. And I'm going to come back to a wavetable. So let's come up here to basic wavetable. Let's click and choose something here. That sounds good. And we've taken a look at our multi-stage envelope. We've seen, we know what ADSR is. We've seen the LFO. We then have Sequencer. And this is another cool tool that we could use or a modulator that we could use to provide movement and rhythm to different parameters within SynthMaster. And again, I'm just going to click, hold, and drag over to our index on the wavetable oscillator. And then when I trigger this, <laughs> Let's soften this up a bit with some reverb and maybe add some cutoff with our filter. Let's activate that. Take our cutoff up just a little bit. And this is another window that we can actually click on the magnifying glass to make this larger and then make some adjustments. Clicking on the circles, we can introduce a curve, pulling down on the handles like so. 
Okay, we can increase the amount of steps. Our loop start, let's pull. The So really cool, we've got cross, fade control, lag, gate. Okay, and so again, here you have your steps control. You can determine your loop start, your Y grid. So we could add a grid up above. So now when we are moving these points, they're gonna snap to that grid. We have different edit modes that we can make use of. Normal, step, guide, up, down, and freehand. And here we have the sync. So we can sync this to our DAW tempo and then choose one from one of the resolutions within this pop-up window. So there's just so many parameters and flexibility contained within here. You can just spend hours and days just with this one modulation source alone, trying it out on all the different parameters, because depending on what you assign it to, you can come up with really cool and creative effects that you never would have thought of on, on your own without experimenting with this modulation source and all these different parameters within it. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out this window. And then finally at the end here, we have a key scaler that's available to us for more experimentation. We've got a 2D envelope as well. These are a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial. We've been going on for quite a while, but we've taken a look at how you can manage your assignments and all of the different parameters in the main first four here. Anytime that we would like to clear an assignment, we can click on the modulation source there. We can see that the collar for the index lights up and we can right click on that and then remove the modulation. If it has multiple modulation sources, you can click on clear modulations and that will remove everything. We can see that even though our sequencer is highlighted, this collar is now cleared of that orange border. And one last thing to mention is that we do have this curve field where we can use that to change the way that our modulation source affects our destination. So this is another area to tweak and experiment with. Double clicking, we take that back to the default of linear. So just know that that is there. And I think we will wrap up here. I hope this has been useful for you. And I hope that you spend many hours and days experimenting with modulation and synth master. I'll see you in the third and final tutorial for this series shortly.